Welcome back, my friends. My name is Eric, and this is Rome, and we're back with kind of another little short video talking about AI art generation. Shorty's behind us there. I don't know, is he going to come in the door? I see his little shadow on the doorway at the back of the hallway there. The answer is apparently no. He will not grace us with his presence. Anyway, uh, I discovered uh, a, a chat. Uh, let's see if I can come up with it. Hold on, hold on. I've got so much crud open at the moment. Um, on the chat G, uh, image jam on Midjourney for chat GPT generation of Midjourney. And you can see um, this is kind of the idea, right? So you write, you, you write a big set of directions for chat GPT to create a prompt based on a random subject, detailed descriptions, that sort of stuff, right? There's apparently all sorts of cool ones out there. Um, I wanted to come up with one specifically for uh, generating portraits for the mods that I've been working on. I think I'm about to get something. Stop. No, no. Amazon just kept driving. Bastards. Anyway, I wanted to write one to generate portraits because I get tired of typing the same thing. Roush and I have been plugging away, trying to come up with cool helmet designs, which we've got 8 billion of at this point, um, as well as some pretty cool um, just general portraits and stuff. And I ultimately like to have one that generates headshots of us to use for the portraits based on a handful of basic helmet designs. Uh, I don't need 80 billion. I don't need every single pilot to have their own unique helmet, right? There's a handful of them out there that people use just like anything else that are manufactured by factories. So realistically, you know, uh, you know, there's gonna be three, four, five, six different types of neural helmets out there in the world um, at any one time. And then some old ones, maybe, you know, a few cutting edge new ones, depending on what you're in, but there's not gonna be 8 billion of them. So it'd be nice if we could go through and, and generate some of these portraits. So I typed up one just in general, not specifically with those, although image references are definitely something we can build into this. And maybe uh, I think Amazon did stop because I hear Shorty barking out there. Uno momento. All right. Uh, I don't know if you will see that, but new controller for the computer and some glossy sticker paper for me to experiment using my Cricut and stickers and, and artwork from here as well. So. Anyway, so I've created this script right here. This is this is a, just a general one. It's just meant to try it out and see kind of what it would do. Um, so step one, choose a subject from the inner sphere houses, and I list all of them. Free Worlds Re League ruled by House Merrick, yada, yada, yada. Choose a primary color of their clothing based on their house. So purple, orange, red, blue, green. Using your knowledge of the Battletech universe, choose the subject's battle mech. Choose whether the subject is in the military or is a mercenary. I figure that's going to affect uniform or not, kind of, so to speak. Day and setting, subject must be wearing a helmet, whether choose whether it has a visor or not. If it does have a visor, is that visor up or down? Is it opaque or not, right? Because your base neural helmet mostly is just there for balance, right? That's it. But all the way up to full AR capabilities, you know, the visor down and all the extra stuff. So choose an action or pose for the subject. Use your imagination, creativity to generate a unique and interesting description, incorporating elements from steps one through seven. Add the following phrase to the end of the prompt, Battletech portraiture, anamorphic, high detailed skin, 1.2 plus film grain plus bokeh plus 8K resolution. I don't know that we're getting that at all of them. Uh, yes, it looks like we are. Select up to three additional visual effects to add to the portraiture from the following list. Lens flare, Ken Burns effect, HDR10, some various different things that sometimes get you cool looks or not, right? So it's going to give you these plus three of those. Then it's going to end with close the prompt with AR 16.9, because I might want to use this for a, a thumbnail is what I was originally thinking. Um, for the, I've got a couple of videos that need them at the moment that have been edited. Uh, S1000, this is how much creativity more or less uh, we give Midjourney to have. I think like 628's base, less than that is stick strictly to what you're doing. Um, and then as you go up, you can kind of vary off of that more and more. Uh, V4, that just means we're using the version 4 of Midjourney. Uh, and then to start the prompt with Imagine Prompt, Raw Photo, Battletech, Full Body Portrait of A. Uh, and I misspelled prompt here now, so let's let's fix that. Doesn't seem to matter. Um, but, and, I, and I'd be polite because if uh, anything, the AI that Bing has told us is that it is keeping track of whether you're a jerk or not to it, which is nice. So um, we've got three of them so far. Uh, this one, it gave us a pretty wordy one, you can see. It just goes on forever. Uh, you know, about our, our House Steiner, middle-aged female member of House Steiner wearing a blue uh, blue clothing, piloting a Warhammer battle mech is in a, uh, who is a mercenary in the middle of the desert at dusk, neuro helmet with a visor up, revealing a determined expression on her face. 
Middle of adjusting controls on our Mac with the left hand, joystick, right hand on the buttons. Mac is in battle ready stance, yada, yada, yada. Now, uh, clearly Mid Journey, this is more than Mid Journey was happy with. Uh, and Mid Journey does not know what Battletech is. There's just not enough out there for it to understand. It wasn't trained on pictures. Star Wars, it knows, right? It knows Star Wars all day long. Uh, but Battletech, not so much. So we're not really going to get a cool Warhammer in this. Although it does give us kind of a, a, a robot mech thing at the background. More of a tank is what it gave us. But otherwise, pretty well nailed it, right? We've got our, our middle-aged female in her blue armor with a helmet, right? Visors up. Pretty good. Pretty good. So next one was much faster. Like, look at this one. Middle-aged male, House Merrick. Uh, wearing purple clothing, piloting a Thunderbolt battle mech. He's a mercenary, sunset on a desert planet. Neuro helmet with an opaque visor, firing its arm-mounted auto cannon while running towards the viewer. Chat GPT knows Battletech, right? That's pretty freaking awesome. And this is what it gave us. So I guess this is more the Thunderbolt, right? Here's a here's a here's the dude, I guess. Um, the others are, uh, or who knows? But you know that one that works, right? Arm-mounted auto cannon. Uh, he's in the head there somewhere. We don't know that again. Got a gun on the arm there. Gun on the arm. I don't know what that is, but you know what? It's there. Uh, this one was also a pretty short one, so we got a uh, middle-aged male from House Kirita piloting a dragon, military officer Forrest at dawn, wearing his neural helmet with an opaque visor, and confident and determined. And, uh, yeah, that's what he gave us. That's, that is a usable mech warrior pilot, right? He's in the woods, go, you know, whatever. It's too much armor and stuff, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. It works. So let's do one more. So let's go ahead, let's get back into chat GPT here. Uh, if I can find my window, um, right here, uh, this is it. Your, uh, this is kind of the the basic. Uh, this is one for an Alien Worlds one uh, that I have not tried yet, but I'm going to. Uh, this one is from uh, Making the Photo. Uh, is is who did that one? Uh, so I need right here. So that's uh, I did some stained glass ones from that same person before I dove into this. So we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna generate it. Response. We're gonna see what we get. Now I have said that sometimes it doesn't get me everything. Um, it had, didn't always get me 16.9. Notice one of them it forgot. Situations. Full body portrait, middle aged male from House Corita wearing a red neuro helmet with opaque visor and his battle mech located in a dark and moody urban setting at night. Military pilot is wearing a primary red outfit with accents of black and silver. Battle mech is sleek and deadly hunchback too, equipped with large auto cannon on its right arm and an array of small lasers on its torso. Pilot stands tall and proud, with its arms crossed over its chest as it surveys the battlefield ahead. His eyes, visible through the opaque visor, betray a fierce determination and a ruthless streak that have earned him both respect and fear from his enemies. We've got a long one this time. His battle mech looms behind him, its red and black paint plating glinting in the dim light. Visor in the neuro helmet is down, hiding his face from view and adding to the imposing presence. As he stands there, a gust of wind kicks up a cloud of dust and debris, casting his figure in an ethereal glow. The high-detailed skin and film grain... Uh, effects add texture to his face and armor with a bokeh effect blurs the background creating another worldly atmosphere to top it off the portrait shot at 85 millimeter lens create a flattering composition that highlights the subject's strong jawline behind his helmet and piercing gaze result is an epic composition that captures the raw power and intensity of the Battletech universe uh yeah and we got it so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll grab all this quick uh control c let's get back into discord here and we'll hit control V, we'll type it in, we'll hit enter, and we'll see what Mid Journey decides to give us today. Clearly we've got some options here because we have its we have his face hidden, but then we talk about his jawline and piercing gaze. So Mid Journey is gonna choose what it wants to choose out of that. And uh, we'll just have to take, we're, we're living in its world at this point, right? Uh, takes a few seconds to start sometimes, so I will pause and wait and rehydrate. Oh, it's coming. All right, so now it's going to count up slowly, and you're going to see as it adds detail. So we've got a dude in red there. That's its base. Now it's going to start filling in details from, from whatever it can fill them in from. Hmm. Except I'm in the way. Hold on, hold on. There. So we're up to 62. I think we'll get two more steps, I think. Usually something in the 90s and then a finalize. And there we go. This is our prompt. So we don't have a hunchback in back because it doesn't know what the hell a hunchback is. 
Uh, but that got us a pretty, pretty darn good. That looks good. I think we can run with that, right? So I do have one more that I want to do. Let's go over here. Um, I'm going to write this real fast. Let's just go um, file. Well, I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to copy some of this. Copy. Now we're going to go file new. Uh, yeah, we saved that one. I'm going to toss this down here. We're going to say choose. Whoops. Choose a uh, battle mech. Oh, we'll say this. Say, using your knowledge of the Battletech universe, choose a battle mech as our subject. Use the primary color of the mech uh hmm no we're just we're just gonna take that out i'm gonna take that out describe the mech in detail such that a an image generation ai that is not trained on battletech can generate a portrait of the of the subject um Get rid of those. Oops. Except this would be, oh, would be too many T's in there. Four. All right. Uh, choose an action or pose for the subject. I think that's fine. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, that'll be step five. Uh, oh, we're way off on our steps. Step three. Step four. Um, from one through four, this will be step five. Um, I don't need high detailed skin. Let's get some. Let's get some uh, film grain, some bokeh, some eight K. Um, Sure, we'll leave all that. I don't really care about it, but and we'll leave that. Um, and we'll update our steps so they're the right steps. Step six, step seven, step eight, step nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go ahead and grab these. Uh, control C. Now we're gonna go over to Chat GPT. We're going to start another conversation. We're going to hit enter. All right. Raw photo. There we go. Sleek and deadly Warhammer mech. Mix of gunmetal gray and deep navy blue with crimson red accents on his weapon. His main weapon, a devastating particle projector cannon, is mounted on its right arm while a pair of medium range missiles sits on its left. Ooh, what version is that? Setting his desolate wasteland at dawn. Okay. Rising sun casting long shadows across the battlefield. The ground is littered with debris and twisted wreckage of other mechs, a testament to the Warhammer's prowess in combat. In the background, the ruins of a once great city can be seen, a stark reminder of the destruction of the war has wrought. Stands tall and proud with their arms raised triumphantly in air. Deadly particle cannon is charging up, ready to unleash destruction upon any who would dare stand in the way. The pose is one of victory and confidence, a testimony to the skill and determination of its pilot. Portrait shot using a 5mm lens. Creating a flattering composition that emphasizes Warhammer's size and power. Anamorphic effect gives the image a cinematic quality, while the film grain and bulk affects that texture, the depths of the scene. Portraits run in stunning 8K resolution, showcasing every detail of the Warhammer's deadly form. To add to the epic feel of the portrait rule of thirds composition used to draw the viewer's eye to the Warhammer, golden ratio is used to balance the image and create a sense of harmony. The result of the master is a masterpiece of Battletech portraiture, a stunning tribute to the power and the majesty of the Warhammer.
um, I don't think we could ask for anything more. Uh, I don't know that that Mid Journey's gonna like it, but uh, I certainly do. So we're gonna jump back in here. We're gonna hit Control V. We're gonna paste that in. We're gonna hit Enter, and we'll go. And we'll see what we get. Now this is automatically adding the V4, so I could probably take that off of my script. Um, because uh, it's just because I already have the settings set for V4. Um, I might actually be able to do... Oh, we'll wait here. Now it's loaded up. I say some of this might be stuff I could just set in settings, period. Um, I can also go through and, and build default prompts that have a set of things. So I could just say, for instance, I built one that's a, called clean that is clean, simple, vector, white backdrop, flat full color, I think is what all goes into it. So I could build some prompts in there that it pulls up from within this. That um, that looks okay. I mean, we, we've still got one more final polish to go. Okay, so let's pull it up. We got four options here. Um, they all look good. Uh, Hmm. I'm definitely assuming that's the particle projectile cannon, right? It decided to do it on just one arm. Now, obviously, what we could do is we could um, we could go back into this script, right? So let's let's take a look at what we got from ChatGPT real fast. We could say, all right, I know that ours. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm gonna go open a new. It's the wrong screen. File. Save as. Now, hold on, we'll just, we'll just put it down here, hold on. Control V. What we could do is we can say, uh, main weapon, devastating power, mounted on both arms, uh, on, on each arm. So we can come back in here on each arm, while paramedium range missiles sits on its left shoulder. I don't remember which shoulder it's on, but that works. So we could, we could play with this a little bit, right? And now we could take this one, grab it again, copy. Let's go back to here. Um, I've got too much stuff open. I get confused easily. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in here. Go ahead. Let's try one more time. Hit enter. Now I'm going to grab one of these. We've got a bunch of them. Let's go with this one right here. I like that one. So we're going to make that one bigger. And we'll just do so one, two, three, four. This means it upscales. It gives us a bigger version. This means it gives us variations of it if we want. So we're going to go there and we'll bring that one up. Let's get back down here. Uh, did I get two of them going at the same time? Oh, this is the that one. It just has the whole text in there. So this is the new one we're building right now with our new PPC on each arm and the missiles on the shoulder. We'll see if it gets us something different. Um, Gunmetal, deep blue, crimson red. Okay, we've got colors in there. I like the stripe. we got a little, again, rule of thirds, right? We didn't get the destroyed city in the background, but that's okay. Let's come down here and see what we got. Uh, it still just gave us one on one arm. It didn't do anything else on there, but maybe those are the missiles on the shoulder. I don't know. I don't know. Those look pretty good, though. I like that one a lot. Oh, with the big minigun? Oh, hell yeah. I was going to use this other one as our thumbnail, but that's now our thumbnail. So you've, you've been spoiled here. Um, so it's still working on that one. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go number two, and we're going to bring that up. And obviously, you play this a few times, um, type the exact same prompt in, right? Because we can we can ask ChatGPT to regenerate the same chat or to regenerate new prompts. Or we can put the prompt in here and let the uh, mid-journey AI translate that how it wants. Because we have the um, S1000, it has a fair amount of wiggle room in how it does this. So we could come back in here and we could say, look, well, first of all, we don't need the V4. Let's turn that off. We already got that. Let's get rid of this uh, right there because that allows it to kind of do more or less what it wants. Or actually, let's go, let's go S1000. Um, uh, let's say 500, which is actually less than normal. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to hit copy. 
we'll go back into here. Uh, there's that one. So it's given us a bigger version of it. That looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? This one's still running. Let's go ahead and put the new one in here. So we've we've taken away its opportunity to go crazy on us, right? And we've toned it down. We want closer to what we typed to be in here and less of its own imagination uh, adding or subtracting to it. Now, I tend to leave it at the default. I don't generally put in an S command at the end at all. I just leave it at the 628 or whatever it normally is at. Roush always puts it up to 750. Um, he likes to give the, the AI a little bit more wiggle room, uh, so to speak. Uh, but we'll see if this if we see a difference. Now, this does tend to get fairly consistent results. It describes things in such a way that mid-journey tends to get you the same thing over and over again. Uh, but now that we've knocked it down to 500, we'll see if we get something slightly different. Now, we didn't see huge differences between this one and this one. Uh, you know, they're pretty similar. One thing on one arm, despite the fact we told it to, it always put it, uh, seems to put it on the left arm, even though I said each arm, although I misspelled it. So it might still be running off the old one. I screwed that up. That might be my fault. Oh, we got our uh, we got our new one there. We've got our thumbnail. It looks good. And now we've got our new one here. I don't really see a huge difference, but this one does get us more of that backdrop, right? We got something going on in the background. Uh, but those look those all look good. And I'll leave this one there. So uh, if you've got some ideas, some thoughts, some things you'd like to do, head over to the Discord. Um, you know, even if you don't have ChatGPT, um, although it is free for the beta, um, so you can run over and grab that if you like. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the the link is. Um, I can show you. Hold on. Um, Chat.openeye.com will get you there. Um, I've got under stock references the main... Um, there you go. Openeye.com. We'll get you there, right? Uh, so anyway, that will get you that. Mid-Journey is free for the first little bit, and then for 25 prompts, then goes from there. But there are a number of other prompt uh, types that you could use. Um, I think one of them is Instant Art. I think this is one. Um, It'll come up here in a second. Let's go. And I think the other one that's big is Leonardo uh, Art AI Gen. Let's see if I can remember what it's called. Is it Leonardo AI? I think that's the one I've been seeing videos of. Yes. And this is another one here um, that I believe also is free at the moment. Um, so lots of options. Some are free. Some aren't. If you get on Discord, uh, I've got a subscription to MidJourney. Roush has a subscription to MidJourney. If either of us is on, feel free to just shoot us over some prompts you'd like to type, see typed in. If you, if you don't feel like signing up or, or you've already used your 25 and don't want to pay, um, I'm sure either of us would be happy to, even though I'm, I'm speaking for him at the moment. But um, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down. We'll see you. Cheers.